Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Senator Rounds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General Kane, once again, thank you for taking the time in my office to visit with me about a number of the items that you're hearing about today. Um, I, I want to go back specifically to an item that Senator Fisher began talking with you about, and, and that is with regard to the, uh, the, uh, the spectrum and the challenges surrounding it. And the reason why I want to use that as an example is because I know that General Milley and General C.Q. Brown both in their, in their role as the chief of staff and providing their best military opinion and advice uh, were put in a position uh, literally of saying to other people within other administrations that this particular part of the electromagnetic spectrum which is currently controlled by the Department of Defense is critical to our national defense. And in fact, over the last several years, I have asked in front of this particular committee well over two dozen uniformed officers to specifically discuss the need to maintain control of specific portions of the electronic spectrum. In particular, I've asked whether or not the 3.1 to 3.45 gigahertz band, if we were to lose that from DOD's specific uh, uh, use, if that would negatively have uh, or would have negative consequences for our warfighting capabilities. And I have had 100% agreement that if we lost that, it would have negative consequences. Would you agree with that assessment? I would, Senator. Thank you. You will be asked at some point because this is a valuable commodity. There's a limited amount of electromagnetic spectrum available. But there are interests within the United States that would love to have access to this without regard to what it would do or not understanding what the impact would be on our national defense. Are you aware that under, under President uh, Trump's proposed uh, concept of a golden dome or a protection, a missile protection system, that a number of the radar systems that would be required to be in effect uh, for that to move forward are found within the 3.1 to 3.45 portions of the, uh, of the spectrum because of their unique physical uh, or, or physics uh, competencies? Senator, I, I'm familiar with the basics of that frequency spectrum. I don't know what particular <clears throat> radars Golden Dome has brought into their mix of equipment, but that would not surprise me. Thank you. I, I just think the, the, this is part of the discussion that's been here today has been a concern by the committee that any person that has the role of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs recognize just how serious their role is with regard to providing a, 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 to, a, to a very, very group of powerful individuals the best professional military advice that they can provide. And recognizing that while you don't control the policy that is set, your role, as this committee sees it, is in many cases the last resort to providing the right types of advice that elected leaders have to hear regardless of whether or not they want to hear it. My understanding, and once again, I'll ask you to just confirm it, you recognize that that is your primary responsibility. Senator, I think that's the most important part of this job and the essential part of this job. And if confirmed, you have my commitment that I'll always speak truth to power. Well, I think you'll find that this committee will be very supportive of you in that role. Uh, General, the B-21 Raider is one of the most capable military platforms the world has ever seen. It will play a crucial role in any conflict the U.S. faces against a near-peer adversary because of its ability to operate in a highly contested environment. The Air Force has committed to at least 100 B-21s, but given its dual missions of conventional long-range strike and nuclear deterrence, many of us believe that we will need a number closer to 200 bombers, if confirmed. Would you be prepared to advocate for more than 100 and perhaps as many as 200 of these platforms if a review of our war plan suggested that that is what required for our operational plans moving forward? Senator, I, the, the last part of your question I think is the key part for me after the analysis portion and you know, mindful that I've not been confirmed for this job yet, I'd like to speak to the other Joint Chiefs and the combat commanders whose requirements Raider will fulfill. 
before I commit to supporting any particular number of B-21s. It's an essential part of our nuclear and conventional program and certainly a, a key component of it. But before I commit to any number, I'd like to study the matter and come back to you. But if that appears to be the case, you would, you would not hesitate to recommend more if those studies warranted it? I would not hesitate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.